So there's no suspicion that, that that end of his life that it was him that did it to himself because he were, he couldn't stand what was about to happen. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Saman. So recently BBC did a, a video which they announced that once that they were about to post a video um, to expose some of the things. This is how they captioned it. The unimaginable horrors of a TB Joshua and everybody was waiting for this video to come out. But then something then happened at the end of the video, the last one. There are three videos. Um, it's a documentary. It's about three hours long at the end of the day. But the last part of the video, days after the former, because in this uh, in this documentary, there are a lot of people that said, you know, that were they were disciples of uh, TB Joshua. A disciple of TB Joshua is a slave to TB Joshua. I was a disciple of TB Joshua for 10 years, from 2001 to 2010. I stayed in that place till 2013. So was that 12, 13 years that, that I was there, yeah, in Lagos? I was 16 or maybe even 15 when I first visited. Um, and then I stayed for 14 years. And they are the ones saying what they saw that happened in there, saying the experiences and the underage girls. Oh, I want you to come up. I want you to come see me. One night they phoned him, he was like, you know, you did so well today. And he said, okay, come up, bring your Bible. And uh, let, let us look at your look at your, your Bible notes with you. And uh, they said they have a clinic there where they remove, this is what they reported, you know, they have a clinic there, it's like underground kind of a clinic where they take out pregnancies. A lot was said there, not only with African um, or Nigerian girls, some of them, I think some of them are South Africans and uh, uh, what's it called, even some are uh, white young girls, underage girls, right? But on the last screen, this is where this is coming from now, right? He says, days after the former disciples gave their first interviews to BBC, TB Joshua died. So, he died days after they gave their interview. Now people are beginning to believe that he ended his life because he couldn't stand the exposing that was about to happen. Because this is not Nigerian exposing. This is an international exposing. It's been done by BBC. And not only that, some of the alleged victims, some of the people that said they were victims, are minors in the Western world, right? Minors outside Nigeria as well. Another thing they mentioned is how important, how important it is to him, how the world sees him. That was exactly what he wanted to achieve. He had special interest in Oyibo. Oyibo the whites. That's why there's this belief that for a documentary as big as the BBC that is going to be international, for a man that wants to be internationally respected, recognized, you know, you, for it to, for him to not have an international exposing was why some people believe he ended his life. Let me read this comment to you guys. Like this comment said, um, according to the BBC, this investigation took over two years. After watching part one and two, I won't be surprised if TB Joshua, okay, committed the S word, knowing he was about to be exposed. Another comment said, um, I'm watching this after finishing because I made a video previously to announce that that, um, to announce that this documentary is about to air on the 8th, right? So this person came back to my, this person came to my video and after they have watched it and said, I'm watching this after finishing the documentary. And you mentioned on how people should speak up as especially when the um, when defendant is still alive no i'm just okay let me leave that let me let me just read person's comment he said firstly documentary takes a lot of time to make true usually a couple of years and according to my understanding the documentary kicked off before this man died it was stated in the documentary that the man died a few days just after his former disciples gave their first interview with the bbc don't you think that's a little sus, suspicious, the timing of his exit, right? That's what this person is saying. And when I was talking about people speaking up, I said it in that video. I said there are some pastors that are doing things and people are afraid to speak up. I said even when people are afraid to speak up, they will speak up when the person's life ends. People will always speak up. Now, look at what BBC said. They are not done, no. Look at what BBC said. You know what I'm saying? I've been saying this for the longest time. We are in a different era. When some pastors think they can oppress people, they can stop people from speaking, they can shut people up, they can people should not speak, and all of that. According to the people that were interviewed, 
They were scared of TB Joshua, right? But listen to this, you know, listen to this. I'm saying it, we are in an era where you can no longer shut people up. The best thing is to change your life rather than continue these things and think you want to shut people up. That's what I was saying in my previous video, right? Okay, look, listen to this. This is what BBC said. Man of God, a patriot cult leader, question. Now they ask, they're asking questions. Listen to this, they said, a groundbreaking investigation into the world famous televangelist preacher, T.B. Joshua. Told by the people closest to him, his disciples. And it says, for two years, BBCI has been investigating. For two years. Okay? Take note of that sentence. Has been investigating. Nothing stays hidden forever. Nothing stays hidden forever. Guys, remember that sentence. Okay, watch the three-part documentary uh, series here. And it says... Listen to the new season of the World of Secrets. Nothing stays hidden forever. World of Secrets. Keep note of those words. We are in a new era. That's my biggest message. To those of you that may not have watched the videos, basically, these are the people that used to be disciples. For example, one of them, she's, uh, I think she's British. She went to Nigeria because they saw TV Joshua on the telly. When they saw TV Joshua on the telly, and she said that she is gay and she wanted a cure. This is what she said. She wanted a cure from being gay. You know, she didn't want to be gay, right? This is what she said. I believe that by my nature, I was unholy. I was gay and that I didn't want to be. I had this huge battle going on in my head and I thought he could help me. That was how she went there. And some other foreigners, South Africans and other Africans and other white people. And they went there for miracle. But the day they were supposed to leave, they came and told them that God wants them to stay behind and be God's disciples. And that was how they stayed. He said, God told me, you're going to stay. You're meant to be here. You're going to stay with me forever. He said, tell them that they should be missionary for the synagogue. You stay here three months, you become uh, like T.B. Joshua. And they were being kept in isolation. They were isolated from basically the world around them. And they spoke about being touched, being used to really, this is what they said, okay? Don't forget, I'm, this is it, I'm narrating what they said. They said that he would touch them, he would do things with them that he shouldn't be doing, especially they were underage girls. There's a, one of the girls that said that she, I think she, they, she did about three abortions for him. That's what she said. She did about three abortions for him. And a lot, some of the boys that used to work with him, said that they would notice that he will invite one of they said his chamber or his room whatever it's called and they have about five different doors so anybody he calls he will tell to come any of those girls he will tell them what of the which of the doors to come through and uh, some of the boys that are always there they say he was never by himself if he wants to even pull they will stand there and he's pulling he will pull his trousers down a bit and they'll pull the rest for him that's what they said is this documentary People compare his five brothers to be his personal slave because everything he needs, you must be there. All is in my mind is, where is he now? Has he eaten? Has he taken his bath? Is the shower ready? You have to be there in his privacy. If I can use the word, even to the nudity, you see everything. When Tim Yoshan needs to go to the toilet, two of us has to be there in the toilet. He would remove his underwear to his knee level. Then we'd bring it down. And uh, that thing. When we bring any of the girls in, we increase the volume of the uh, television to the highest. So it's so loud. And then one of them said he peeped one day and saw what he saw. We happen to sleep in his bathroom. We have to sleep on the floor. A little space there where we have his towels being hanged. That's where we lie on the floor on beer towels. At a particular time in the middle of the night, he just asked us to go to our room to go sleep. He would put us in the room next door. He would lock the door. Next thing we hear from inside the room is he turns on the TV set aloud, very, very loud. Look me, Lord, from all relationships of the flesh. I was curious, why? Why is Daddy locking us outside? I was curious. So I had to peep under this door. When I peeped under the door, I saw a certain lady's foot there. She knelt down close to the long chair. Then I realized that something was happening there. Some activities was going on. It's as if something sexual was happening here. This is what is disciples are saying 
This is what they said in these documentaries. And uh, one of the girls said one day she just summoned the courage to kind of say to him, uh, spoke to him about what he has done. And there's something else that they said that if you tell one person, one of your fellow disciples, they will tell you you're all sisters, you're all brothers. So any of them you confide in will go and report. Nobody believed in keeping, it's like they didn't believe in keeping secrets from him. They will go and report you. And once you're reported, you're in trouble. We were obligated to go and report and tell TB Joshua every single thing. If did the wrong thing, there was punishment. And that was said in different forms. The sister reported me and said, oh, Jessica called me and told me that you touched her inappropriately. He stood up from his chair. Do I do that to you? Can I do that? A man of God? And she said, no, sir. She's lying. She's just lustful. He hit me. He slapped me. He punched me. He kicked me in the stomach. All disciples go through this. Even the most powerful people have to be brought down because he is at the very top all the time. If there's a plan for you when you come to that meeting, you won't be able to defend yourself. Shut up! Bye! Keep quiet! What do you want to say? Do you want, do you want to argue with Papa? Do you want to argue with Daddy? He made everybody your enemy and you everybody else's enemy. There was no safe place. There was no friend. There's nobody you could go to and say, oh my God, this happened. I saw this. You'd be terrified. And that's why a lot of them were afraid to speak up. So... When they now said that after the disciples were, that's the disciples that left, after they were interviewed, a few days later, his life ended. So people are suspecting, maybe as they granted that interview, maybe they told a friend and the next, maybe they told one person or the other, and that was how he possibly got to know that this interview was granted. And for that reason, he began to panic because this is at an international uh, 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 because this is at, a, at an international level. From what they said, he's somebody that his reputation internationally was important to him. Oh, by the way, when he, that's what they said in the documentary, that uh, even they said some of, people, some, of, some of the people that came, when they were leaving, he gave them CDs, not CD, you know, those uh, used to be those cassettes in those days, to go home and show everybody because he wanted them to go so that the international, the more they spread among their people, the more international attention he would get. They said he really, really craved and wanted international recognition. So the belief now is that the international recognition was about to turn to international uh, exposing, international uh, um, disgrace. You know, this is what the belief now is that he was afraid of that international uh, exposing or international disgrace. And that is why, that is the belief some people now have is that that's, he decided to choose the option of ending his life. One of the girls said when she reported, um, when she went back to her country to the police and they said they were going to get uh, Interpol involved. And, and let's be honest, if it was still alive and this thing was aired, there's a big possibility that countries like South Africa and uh, all these foreign countries, the UK, they may want to get involved into investigation. So the general belief is that he chose to leave before the whole thing falls apart in front of him. People are not believing that, okay, because that is uh, exit, that is death. Never, you know, because that his death never really made any sense. And the way he was behaving that day before he finally went, because don't forget that the way his life ended, he went into a room, sat down, and that was it. So there's now suspicion that, that that end of his life, that it was him that did it to himself because he, were, he couldn't stand what was about to happen. And let me actually add here another case in, you know, in history of another man, of a pastor that um, had the kind of a gathering where they claim, you know, a gathering where they claim love and they said they gather people and they were trying to have their own, you know, communal life and was showing love to everybody. This man's name was Jim Jones. When he was about to be exposed and the government was closing in on him, what did he do? He decided to choose another way out, which was to end his life. But in his own case, he ended his life and the lives of his followers. So people are beginning to think that that last service that uh, um, T.B. Joshua organized, you know, he was in a church service and then he, he walked away from everybody, went inside, sat down somewhere, and that was the end of it. So people are asked, you know, speculations are bound to come up. That could it be that he was about to do another Jim Jones? So that is basically the story. So um, I don't know what you guys think. What are your opinions? Do you Are you one of those that believe that he ended his life? Because uh, this was this exposing was about to happen, and he couldn't stand the shame, and he couldn't stand the fear of being maybe arrested, Interpol getting involved, and all of that. Or do you think that his death was natural? That uh, you know something else he didn't end his life. I don't know what your opinions are. Whatever your opinions are, leave them in the comment section below. And at the same time, like we said, in this 2024, we're going to be clicking the like button. So please don't forget to click the like button. And um, as always, leave your opinions in the comment section below. And uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until next time, guys.
Bye-bye. Bye.